And we start with Adam Gilchrist. Um, distinct, I suspect, in the Republic of Western Australia, where this is burning most furiously, co-host of Gilly and Goss. Uh, Gilly, great to have you on the program. Hey, Jared, how are you, mate? Uh, yeah, you're right. The, the, uh, it's a hard, hard border. It doesn't let too many things in. But, uh, yes, all the... Uh, the discussion, the stench, depending on which way you look at it, but whatever the case, the, the news has travelled obviously uh, thick and fast over here to the west, and uh, there's a, a fairly patriotic sort of um, uh, group of, uh, given that we are classified as our own nation now, that uh, are vehemently supporting Justin. Uh, but look, I think in all seriousness, it's it's not just. I think it'd be uh, shallow to say it's just West Australians that are, are supporting him. Uh, and it's it, there's West Australians who may have the other view that it, perhaps it was time for him to go. So I think um, it's reflective across everywhere that there, there is the opportunity for people to have their own individual view on the situation. But, um, but I think just that quote there that I heard, I think it was Gideon Haig in that little montage of clips saying that it's just the the uncertainty of truth or the, the, the un, uh, lack of information that the public, who you know, we often hear are the key stakeholders in the game, and I'd like to get to that word stakeholder eventually, but uh, that the public, uh, we, we're bereft of information continually from Cricket Australia, and it seems, take, take the decision that was made out of it, it's the follow-up and, and, and the lead-up to the decision that just baffles so many people and means it's very, very hard to form a solid judgment on what actually has happened. It is a lack of detail and almost a feeling that things are continually being covered up and tried to be swept under the carpet to move ahead in the, in the understanding that it may just go away and, and it feels like we're at that place again. Did you have an emotional reaction when you heard how it had resolved? I had a very emotional reaction. You know, it goes without saying that Justin Langer and I and many other players that he played with are as tight a group of friends as it, we could ever possibly hope to have. So that, that's a given and that's on the table. I think he was a remarkably amazing cricketer and, and I think he's a, an even better person. And, and I personally think that his coaching record over 10 years would say that he's possibly one of, if not the most successful coaches in, in the history of the game. That that's fine. I don't want to get emotional. That's why I didn't say anything on the day of the announcement because I didn't feel that it would be worth my while adding to a, an emotional pile-in of which can be completely understood if, if you're a friend of Justin's. But uh, as I say, sitting back and, and stepping back and, and thinking about the scenario, it, it, it's, again, not necessarily the decision that has been made but the scenario that has been created, again, that is probably of what I think greater concern and something that uh, the public who are expected to support this game, uh, that's more concerning. So the change of the past four years from when Justin came to the job to he departs, is there a risk that that work is undone in his departure? Look, I think I think there is a, a big risk from the public perception. Um, we all know the old line about perception and reality. Uh, but and, and everyone who's followed this knows that Justin was asked to come in and, and do a job and pick the team up and the profile of the team and the perception of the team in a public space right up out of the gutter. And that's, let's be honest, that's where it was one of the lowest moments in Australian career history. So he was tasked with a job and there's no denying that he's successfully done that. What, what I wonder, and I, I don't care to get into a battle with you know, current players, you know, the, the, it, that's been going on for every generation after generation, hasn't it? The, I remember I've, I've tried to put my player cap back on and I remember as a player, we thought we knew it all. We thought we knew everything that was right and how things should go. And it's only through time and, and hindsight that you realise that you didn't. And, and that's simple. That's life and that's experience as we um, move ahead and, and learn and draw on those experiences and start to get perspective, particularly from 
uh, and guidance from more experienced people and then you start to formulate differing opinions at times. So that, that's fine and, and the players are well and truly entitled to have their uh, input into back to head office to say how things are going and, and how they feel about situations. That's, that's not in dispute here at all. What I'm concerned about is, is the governance model, the governance qualities at Creed Australia once again. They get Justin to come in and do that very, very challenging job. They, he does a job with complete and utter conviction and commitment. And four years later, the same very players that were right at the heartbeat of taking the game down into that uh, unenvious position gave their opinion. And the board that control the game, that run this game, have now taken, and I don't care to listen to any more of the corporate speak about transition and uh, trying to uh, analysis uh, of, of the coach's position and, and all that um, needs analysis and requirements and uh, evolution, that's just covering up that the players and, and certain support staff around that team have spoken and they no longer want to adjust them there. Again, the players, I'm not inside that camp, so I can't question whether they are well-intentioned or not. I'm sure they're well-intentioned from the way they see it. But this board, I just can't believe that someone on that board didn't stand up in the meeting, and they may well have done it, Jared, and said, hang on, hang on. How are the optics going to look on this first and foremost? What's the public going to think after what we asked Justin to do? And really, do we think that we should be placing that decision-making back to the group that we found ourselves in the very situation four years ago? And it, I'm just stunned that that, and it may well, as I said, it may well have happened, but whatever the case, the CEO was told to go out there and front up to the public and carry on with those, the wording uh, and the continued references of those big key words that was corporate speak. It just, that's what I found really frustrating and really challenging. Do you accept the explanation that Langer was an obstacle to unity at the moment within that dressing room? Absolutely, there seems to have been some sort of disunity there. There's no denying that. I don't think the players would have pushed so hard both uh, privately to create Australia and clearly, and I, I could not tell you, I have no clue of what and if players were doing it or player managers, but but very much feeding information to the press. There was a concerted effort to have Justin pushed out of the position. So that wouldn't have been going on if there wasn't some people inside that tent that had a real issue with Justin. Whether it was everyone, gee, I, look, I, I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of people have been saying it's only his mates and his ex-players, ex-teammates and, and guys that played with him that are, are supporting him, not one player has supported him publicly. I, I think there has been some some nice comments from players, from younger players that have shown a, a, a support. And I would hazard a guess to say that there was players within the, the current setup that are in the team at the moment across the various formats that actually really do like the, his method and his the impact that he's had on their game. But are they going to come out and speak strongly and openly in support of him being reappointed when they know the overriding mood of the stronger personalities, the people that are regulars there, the people that have very, very uh, compelling situations around the cricketing globe now where the focus of playing for Australia as an outsider and the cynic may say is being questioned in amongst all the, all the uh, cricket that is on the landscape. That's that's an easy perception for people to have out there. So I would say that, yes, there's been discontent in there. There's people that don't like uh, certain things about his style and technique, but I wouldn't personally believe, I find it hard to fathom, that it is the entire player group. How deeply affected has Justin been by it, Gilly? Well, I just think anyone should sit back and, and try to place themselves in that position of where 
for the course of 12 months and it, it turned up very quickly after the Indian series lost last summer. There just seemed immediately in sections of the press and certain people and, and clearly within the play group that it was time to act. That, that, that the blame for that loss very much was dissipated by a focus on the coach. It was the focus was taken off the fact that the players didn't get it done against an understrength Indian team. That's the fact. So put since then, through to the through to the now where daily, every day, he is being put out in a situation and painted a certain way, he's being painted by some particular people as a monster. That is not Justin Langer. He will be the first to admit that he has his uh Frailties. He has his his areas of weakness, but gee, he'll sit and look you in the eye and and he'll work it out with you. So he's being painted as a monster. What sort of effect does that would that have on you personally? And what's the flow on effect onto your family and the people that are closest and nearest and dearest to you, particularly through a period of time when you are not really understanding what is going on? It, it's continual rumor and innuendo, and then. I think he state, stated it perfectly in his resignation letter. You know, honesty, respect, trust, truth, performance. And then, unfortunately, he felt a compelling need to say, if that's been the trouble, I apologise. That's the, they're the foundations that he bases his life on. And I, I totally agree with him, and I unfortunately disagree with him that he felt a need to apologise because that shouldn't be a situation. They could have offered him a five-year deal, but I think through these last few days... Justin realised that a lot of those key fundamentals and values that he has always consistently based his life on, there was very, very little of that coming either from within the group or from Cricket Australia. And that's, again, where I think my focus goes to now. I, I, there's, it's done. The player group has to know that they've got to manage that forward going now, uh, going forward now with whoever fills that role permanently. And, and, and they may well sit back in years' time and say, look, we did it. We got the results. But the cost on a human being and his family and the method which, which, with which everyone has gone about this and none the least Cricket Australia and the board, it's, it just stuns me that they, they, they have been prepared like Gideon Hay mentioned, that they that the personal capital and and the, the human capital that they are happy to to churn and burn is extraordinary. I think it's quite reckless, and some of the decision making over a long period of time in there has been fueled by greed, and it, it really leaves me staggered. Gilly, it's good to get your thoughts. Good luck with the quarantine period, and we'll catch up soon. Thanks, Jeff.